some brands offer you low finance or cashback or servicing. Renault don't do ors. We do ands. The Renault Cajar with 1.91% APR and €1,000 cashback and three years servicing, saving you thousands. Renault, the brand with the ands. Visit your local Renault dealer. Finances made under a higher purchase agreement. Terms and conditions apply. Deposit required. Subject to lending criteria. See Renault.ie. Welcome into the Sports Memo. NFL, every game on the board betting podcast with our guest, Teddy Covers. Teddy, happy Friday to you. Welcome to the podcast. How are you? Hey, happy Friday. I, uh, I always like that one. Happy Friday, guys. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's been a weird weekend. It's been like raining and cloudy in Vegas all week. And all of a sudden, it's like Friday. You're like, man, you know, where's the sunshine? Uh, but it's all good. Very excited about the upcoming weekend. Absolutely. We got uh, full full slate here. We're doing the top half on uh, on this segment. Then we'll bring in Robbie Vino to finish off the NFL Every Game on the Board podcast. And Teddy, NFL sides, you're at 63%. NFL year to date, 59%. And uh, longer term, NFL since 2015, my favorite one, 57, almost 58% NFL. So uh, you know what you're talking about. Anything uh, you want to get off your chest before we, we get into each matchup? <laughs> oh, there's lots of stuff I want to get off my chest <laughs> before we get into the matchup. But, you know, uh, the Cavs did last night an easy one with uh, the Titans uh, over the Jags. You like them, uh, you know, when the big plays work in your favor. And certainly, you know, a uh, uh, four-play stretch in the second quarter changed that play, uh, that game completely uh, with a goal line stand uh, from Tennessee followed by a 99-yard touchdown run uh, from uh, Derrick Henry. But, you like them when they come nice and easy on that, uh, like uh, the Titans did last night. We'll see if we can uh, put together more easy winners for the clients this weekend. The uh, three-pack already locked and loaded. Three uh, for Sunday, uh, available right now at sportsmemo.com. Yeah, and Teddy, uh, we were just talking about it before we started. I mean, we were both on that side. Um, I saw it as just the, the team with motivational issues, short week, on the road, in the NFL. It was pretty much an auto play for me. You actually took out of it um, something particular to Jacksonville, huh? You're looking to fade them the rest of the way? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, look, I, <laughs> uh, I've been fading the Jags lately. Let's just put it that way. And last night's game certainly – and Jacksonville fits into that profile of a team that you don't want on the road, on a short week, late in the season. You know, you have the squads that had the high expectations and they're not going anywhere. Those are not or do not tend to be bet on teams in December road games. Teddy, we got uh, 105 to 118 here. And, guys, right before we start, want to give out this special coupon code for the podcast. It's NFL half. That's NFL H-A-L-F at checkout for half off Teddy's rest of the NFL season. That's $200 worth of savings at sportsmemo.com, NFL half, at checkout for his full season NFL service. We got 105-106 here, Teddy. Baltimore at Kansas City, 51 the total. Looks like KC, 6.5, laying at home pretty much across the board. Yeah, a whole lot of wise guy support for the Ravens this week. And certainly, when you look at these two teams' season-long defensive numbers, there's a pretty big discrepancy. Baltimore, uh, after last week's dominant performance, uh, defensively at Atlanta, you know, uh, I mean, <laughs> you don't see Matt Ryan get held under 100 yards uh, very often. 97 net passing yards uh, for uh, the Falcons uh, last week at home. And all of a sudden that Ravens defense now, not only number one in the NFL on a yards per play basis, but number one in the NFL by a wide margin on a yards per play basis. 4.6 uh, yards per play allowed. Uh, the average, 5.7. Uh, so, <laughs> it speaks volumes uh, about how good that Baltimore defense is and the betting markets. You know, look at Kansas City, who's given up six yards of play uh, this season. A Chiefs team uh, that, you know, the last two games, they've given up uh, 87 points uh, to the Raiders uh, and Rams. And they say this is not a defense uh, that we want to be laying this type of price with. All that being said, you know, the Ravens had lost, what, four in a row. Uh, sorry, three in a row. Uh, and, uh, you know, things were falling apart and Harbaugh was on the hot seat and all of that. And now it's three straight wins. Who'd they beat? They beat Cincinnati, <laughs> Oakland, and an Atlanta team, you know, on the week after their season ended. So it's not like we've seen this Ravens team knocking off superior competition during this Lamar Jackson-led hot streak. And, uh, of course, if Baltimore falls behind here, 
Do you want Lamar Jackson trying to catch you up from behind? <laughs> I don't. I, I, I can tell you that much. You know, Ravens in game. If they fall behind, I want no part uh, of Baltimore. Um, all that being said, Patrick Mahomes last week was making he was making throws that he shouldn't be making. You know, throwing late on his back leg across the middle, and they were working against the Raiders defense. That's not going to work against Baltimore defense. And you know, Mahomes. I'm not going to say it's a reputation, but I, I still recall back to the you know the preseason when he was throwing all those picks in training camp, and you know he's a guy that wants to fit balls into tight windows that could work in the Ravens' favor. Although Baltimore's defense hasn't exactly been creating turnovers in bunches on a week in, uh, week out basis, uh, and the pass rush hasn't been that dominant either. Teddy, we got 107, 108, Indianapolis, Houston. It looks like 50 the total with uh, Houston laying five or four and a half at home. Well, I got both these teams wrong last week, so let me start. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, with the uh, you know that with with that <laughs> as the beginning of the analysis, because you know I was on Indy, and then you know they're, they're, I'm not gonna say they were wrong against Jacksonville, but they didn't score any points, so uh, <laughs> it wasn't uh, certainly wasn't a right side. Uh, in that ball game, uh, and I had the uh, the Browns in their four turnover debacle uh, against the Texans uh, in that ball game, where you know things it just didn't break right for Cleveland from the get go. So uh, certainly, when you look at these two teams over the course of the season, and you look at the matchups on the field, there's nothing that says that Indy can't compete uh, here against Houston. Certainly, when the Texans are going to finish four and you know plus four in turnovers, they're going to win uh, a bunch of games. And Houston has really been impressive at avoiding turnovers like the plague. They've only had one game where they've committed turnovers in the last six weeks, which is hard to do. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, in that, in that one game, uh, the one they won uh, against Denver, they had two. Uh, sorry, was the one that they uh, uh, won against Washington? They had two interceptions and a fumble. Uh, lost in that kind. That's it, you know. So it's it's been a team that has been able to avoid mistakes. And boy, you know, you look at that Texans passing game against an indie defense. The Colts defense has impressed me this year. They're better than I thought they were going to be. Significantly better. And Darius Leonard's been a you know a leading tackler as a rookie, a linebacker. There's been a pass rush uh, for the Colts. T. Y. Hilton's banged up, and for as good as Indy's defense has been. You know, they're good enough to shut down Houston. Houston's kind of clicking right now uh, and playing on this field at home where they've been very comfortable. Third straight uh, home game uh, for the Texans. The spot to me says Indy, no question. Um, I, I do worry, however, about the Colts' ability to handle that Texans pass rush, a unit that's capable of being pretty dominant. And, of course, if the Texans don't turn the ball over like they haven't done, it's not like Indy's defense is forcing a ton of turnovers on a week-in, week-out basis. The Colts can't force turnovers here does not bode well for their chances. Teddy, you talk about the scarcity of uh, turnovers for Houston. How much of that, where do you fall as far as turnovers and the correlation going forward? And and does it change from interceptions and fumbles? Teams that are taking care of the football tend to take care of the football. Teams that are making mistakes tend to continue making mistakes. There is an element in the betting markets and it's very real. They say, oh, my God, so-and-so's you know, minus 20. You know, the Niners are minus 20 in turnovers right now. Uh, Tampa's minus 18. And all those numbers can do is go up. Right. You know, I don't buy that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, teams that are playing from behind with bad quarterbacks and bad offensive lines are going to turn the ball over. It's what they do. Uh, and you look at the other end of the equation. Gee, you know, New England is up at the positive turnover differential every single time season and so do the teams with good quarterbacks who aren't playing from behind and good offensive line so to say all right well you know this team's negative turnover differential therefore they're an undervalued commodity or this team is a positive turnover differential therefore they're an overvalued commodity uh, to my mind that's that's not looking enough at the situation you have to see what's the story with these turnovers are they unforced errors you know, is your QB throwing interceptions in the red zone on first down? <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, or, or are these, you know, the, the type of turnovers that are, you know, likely to is it is it something that's systemic within what they're trying to do, or is it something that's just random? And as a handicapper, it's your job to be able to tell the difference between those two. 
Well said, Teddy. We got 109-110 up next, Carolina at Cleveland. Um, looks like 1-2, to two, depending where you shop in this one, Teddy, and that's the Panthers laying on the road, 47 the total. Sure, and uh, I'm interested. That there's a fair bit of – this is the first time I've seen any betting market support for Carolina in like a month. Right. You know, during this span, uh, as the Panthers have gone from a 6-2 and two likely, you know, wild card team slash, you know, contending with New Orleans for a division uh, title – uh, into the six and six team that's now on the outside looking in, and everything's falling apart, and you know the sky's falling uh, for Carolina. They haven't been getting whipped in these games. They just been, they've come up short in a bunch of coin flip games at the end, and it's certainly frustrating uh, for the Panthers. Obviously, you read the quotes; uh, they're a very frustrated team right now. All of a sudden, Ron Rivera can't coach. Well, I don't know that Rivera could ever coach, but uh, I don't think that it's his fault. Uh, you know, you can blame him for the two point conversion try uh, in Detroit. Uh, that didn't come through. But uh, other than that, I don't know that it's, it's Rivera's uh, fault. Uh, and, of course, Cam Newton uh, hasn't – Cam Newton was bad last Sunday, flat out. Uh, you know, he's got a bump shoulder. He's struggling to be on the practice field. Uh, Newton's not 100%, but he's certainly a better QB than the one uh, we saw uh, last week. Now, Cleveland showed us that they couldn't handle prosperity. Um, you know, it was a fluky game in, in some regards uh, against Houston, but – you know, Baker Mayfield made mistakes, and Mayfield is going to do that, at, you know, like any rookie quarterback, against uh, some of the more challenging defenses that he faced, that he faces. The Panthers can be challenging in that they mix up their schemes pretty good, but from a pure talent perspective, this is not one of Ron Rivera's better defenses. All that being said, I do lean Carolina in this ballgame. I haven't pulled the trigger, and I probably won't. Uh, but it's a Panther spot in a real way, and I'm not sure there's much the Browns are going to do about it. Guys, remember the coupon code NFL half at checkout for half off Teddy's rest of NFL season up to $200 in savings. Teddy, we got NFC matchup here, 111, 112. The aforementioned Atlanta Falcons, you know, you mentioned their season over. They're traveling to play Green Bay, 51 the total. Looks like the Packers laying five at home. Yeah, and boy, you know, if you talk about one game that I want no part of this week, this is probably it. Right. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, and I, I really want no part of I, – I'm not convinced. You know, there's a there's a thought process out there that, oh, Mark McCarthy's gone. The Packers are going to play great this week. I don't think Philbin's the answer either. You know, it's, it's been his offense that, uh, McCar- that uh, Aaron Rodgers has been ripping all year. Um, you know, this is a Packers team. They lost five of their last six. Their coach just got canned. They're not going to the postseason. I'm not convinced that Aaron Rodgers is the most liked guy in the locker room. The receiving core is no good. This isn't a team I'm comfortable laying points with right now. Uh, you know, Atlanta, well, <laughs> I mean, they're coming off, you know, an ugly no-show game against Baltimore at home. Now you have a dome team playing at Lambeau in December with nothing to play for. And, yeah, uh, you know, their their defense is getting better. They got Deion Jones uh, back in the lineup. He had 13 tackles in a sack uh, last Sunday. But, you know, I mean, Matt Ryan's got a 25 to tie, five TD to interception ratio. Julio Jones is the leading receiver in the NFL, and the Falcons stink. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, uh, and then they had, you know, no energy last week uh, whatsoever. So, I, I guess if, if I had to play this game, I'd be more looking at the Atlanta side. I don't want any part of Green Bay, but do I trust the Falcons? No, uh, I don't trust the Falcons right now. Um, you know, they were pretty flat last week. They made a ton of mistakes the week before, and you know, road games in cold conditions for teams like Atlanta, like Jacksonville, you know, teams that were supposed to be good but aren't. No, (laughs) there's better bets on the board than this one. Yeah, I have no interest in getting involved in that one either. Teddy, we got 113-114, New Orleans, Tampa Bay, NFC South matchup here, 9.5. The Saints laying on the road, 54.5 the total. Yeah, I mean, you know, remember uh, what Ryan Fitzpatrick did uh, against New Orleans, uh, back in September, what, 48-40 to 40, uh, as 10-point dogs, 417 yards, five TDs from Fitzpatrick in that game. Since that time, of course, uh, the Saints have been pretty juggernaughty. 10-1 <laughs> and one straight up, 9-2 uh, and two, uh, uh, against the spread. They'll certainly remember what happened. Although, they, I mean, let, let's be honest, the Saints have had their fair share of problems with the Bucks in recent years. They've lost four of the last seven meetings straight up uh, and... Uh, against the spread. Um, Speaking of turnovers, you know, Jameis Winston, back-to-back weeks with no turnovers. He's changed his game. Earlier in the season, you know, the Fitzmagic thing definitely affected him. 
and Tampa was taking all of these shots downfield. And that's not – I'm not saying Winston can't make those throws. He certainly can. He was the number one pick overall for a reason. Uh, but those are not the high percentage, low frequency of takeaway uh, throws that he's been making uh, the last – a couple of weeks. It's been a lot more check down routes, a lot more shorter routes, a lot more crossing routes uh, for Tampa. And lo and behold, you know, Winston's playing good ball. I'm not in any rush to be betting on the Saints right now. You know, we talk about a team that has built an enormous betting bandwagon and then they played back to back Thursdays and the offense looked out of sync in both those games. Now they're back to Sunday and okay, you know, on the road, uh, may well rain. Uh, the weather early forecast uh, for Tampa is not a pretty one on Sunday. Um, you know, there's there's zero point spread value backing the Saints right now, and they were out of sync in two straight weeks. And, I, you know, I'm not convinced the offense gets right back into sync uh, in what could be nasty conditions uh, on Sunday. So definitely lean here towards the home dog. Bucks are playing better football. Teddy, we got two AFC East matchups to end it here. New York Jets, Buffalo Bills up first. Looks like 38 the total with the Bills laying three and a half at home. Yeah, Bills laying three and a half. That doesn't look like a point spread that uh, is going to attract uh, a lot of attention. But uh, at the same time, you look at current form, you know, look at the Bills the last couple of weeks, okay? They had the, those, you know, those ugly, ugly losses when they didn't have a quarterback, you know? When it was uh, Nathan Peterman or Derek Anderson or whoever the hell they were trotting out there and they got blown out by, you know, 30, uh, 37 to 5 and 25 to 6 and 41 to 9. Three week span against Indy. New England and Chicago. Well, since that time, they went to the Jets and beat the Jets by 31. They knocked off Jacksonville at home. And last week, I know they lost to Miami. Make no mistake about it. They were by far the better team. They were outgained, they outgained Miami by 200 yards in that game. And it was fluky. Weird things happen, and, you know, that can happen uh, to teams like Buffalo. Uh, but when it came to, you know, is this team ready to play? Has this team thrown in the towel? Can Josh Allen move the offense? The answer is yes, they're coming to play. No, they haven't thrown in the towel. And, and yes, Josh Allen is moving the football. You know, the, 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 the Bills' offense is very different now than it was uh, just a few weeks ago. The Jets' offense isn't. <laughs> you know, yeah, they're supposed to have Sam Darnold uh, back this week. And at times this season, with Darnold behind center, and when Anunua and Robbie Anderson have been healthy, and when they've been able to get something out of Crowell and company for the, for the, from the running game, this offense has looked explosive. They had downfield weapons. I mean, and uh, there was a handful of games early in the season where the Jets are, all right, yeah, they're moving the football. That's a long way in the rearview mirror. Uh, now, and the way they lost last week, you know, where they had up 16 nothing at Tennessee, and they've got them on the ropes, and the way that game slipped away, and you could kind of feel the Jets like, hanging out of the rope and hanging on and slipping and slipping. I, I really worry about the Jets' ability to compete uh, this week, even against a divisional rival uh, that beat them by, you know, 31 uh, less than a month ago. Uh, I'm not sold on uh, on the backing the Jets in Buffalo with, uh, you know, in the last few games of the Todd Bowles era. Teddy, last game for us. And guys, remember the coupon code NFL half at checkout for 200 bucks worth of savings, half off of Teddy's rest of NFL season at sportsmemo.com. An interesting one for you, Teddy. You're one win away on your Miami Dolphins uh, season win total bet of over six and a half. We got them uh, right now. This is the number one versus number two team in the AFC East, New England at Miami. Looks like the Pats seven and a half or eight on the road. 48 the total in Miami Gardens on Sunday. Yeah, and lo and behold, you know, what are we seeing? You know, what did we talk about earlier? We talked about, oh, the statistical profiles, and, oh, the turnovers, and, uh, you know, New England's statistical profile is never, never won. I mean, I, I can't think of a season. The, the, maybe the one year where they were killing everyone and winning, by, you know, the Randy Moss year. Uh, but literally, that's it. Uh, you know, statistically, the Patriots, year in, year out, look fairly Mediocre. And look at this year. You know, yeah, 5.9 yards per play gained, 5.7 allowed. They're plus 0.2 uh, yards per play. You compare that to, you know, the Steelers are plus a full yard per play. The Chiefs are plus a full yard per play. The Chargers are plus 1.3. Uh, and here's New England at plus 0.2. Uh, you know, and you know, right, nothing to be excited about the Patriots. And that's why we see the money. There's, there's, no, there's no wise guy interest in the New England side. Uh, worth noting, the Patriots have been trending under, five straight unders uh, for New England. It's a defense 
That is much better than it was early in the season. The Dolphins are trending under. You're catching unders each of the last uh, four weeks with an offense that is having their fair share of problems. Look, Miami's a mess, and if I cash my ticket, I know I still need one win. They got four weeks to do it. I don't know that I'm going to get it here, uh, but uh, you know the Dolphins are the worst 500 team in the NFL. Uh, the injuries everywhere, uh, and I, I give Adam Gase a ton of credit. Adam Gase isn't going to get a vote for coach of the year. This team should probably be 0 and 12, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or 1 and 11. Uh, Gase has coached a bunch of, you know, coaxed. Uh, a bunch of wins out of this Dolphin squad. And, of course, you know, Miami has had their fair share of success against New England on this field. 27-20. Dolphins beat them straight up last year as 10.5 point dogs. 31, oh, no, I'm sorry, 20-10. Uh, to 10. Uh, They beat them straight up uh, in 2016 uh, late in the campaign. They won here in 2014 as well as underdogs and in 2013. Uh, on this field, Miami uh, beats the Patriots. So they've certainly had success against New England. There's certainly not a groundswell of support uh, for the Patriots uh, in the wise guy community. But, man, you look at the matchups. And, again, this, this is a Dolphins team that was outgained by 200 yards at home against the Bills last week and won. And I give them credit. They made a handful of big plays. Uh, New England's a different animal than Buffalo uh, in that regard. It's Patriots or pass for this better, especially now. This line has been bet down, and frankly, you know, I mean, uh, you know, Chris has got a seven with juice right now. Um, there may be more of those. I don't know if there'll be a lot more of those, but it's certainly worth considering if you like the uh, Patriots. There's no rush to lay the seven and a half when sevens could be coming. Teddy, yeah, I, I think this is a little bit of a tricky handicap. I mean, you mentioned that the, the Pats not being like spectacular, but they are covering numbers. I mean, depending what what number. Yeah, that's mean. the whole point. I mean, this has been a team that has absolutely overachieved to their statistical profile, not just this year, not just last year, for the last decade plus in the Belichick-Brady era. And, and Teddy, the, the, the last point I was going to make is, uh, you know, you bring up the home field, talked a lot about it. I agree with you. You know, being down here in South Florida right now, it, it's a known thing. The Pats struggle in South Florida. And this year, you know, the Dolphins are 5-1 and one at home. So as far as... Uh, bringing in the location of the game. I think there's really something to that, and you need to factor that in in, in this handicap. What, what, what do you think about the location? I think that New England is a lot better than Miami on any field. I think the Patriots are an undervalued commodity and have been in September. And look, don't get, uh, have been uh, in December repeatedly. <laughs> you know, not once, not twice. Look at New England down the stretch. You know, and you throw out some of those Week 17s that don't matter. And you look at the you know Patriots Weeks 13 to 16, and they're not a team that I've got a whole lot of interest in stepping in front of. Now, from a spot standpoint, here's this crappy Dolphins team that New England blew out earlier in the season. They just came off a big win against Minnesota. Up up next, they got Pittsburgh at Pittsburgh next week. You say maybe it's a look ahead. Um, you know, Dolphins don't, uh, Patriots don't play on this field. All of those factors are real. I still trust New England more than I trust Miami. Uh, I don't want the Dolphins as home dogs here. There is a class difference between these two teams that was very much on display uh, when they met earlier in the season. Final score of that ball game: uh, New England thirty-eight, Miami seven. Teddy, what's on the docket this weekend? We got uh, what first Saturday with uh, just the Army Navy game. No full slate of college football. Does that what does that change for you? Uh, that changes for me in that I'm focusing on college basketball on Saturdays now uh, instead of college football. Uh, but uh, you know what the college basketball Saturday cards are. You spend all day, uh, all night, Friday night uh, working on it. It's just uh, how it is uh, during uh, college hoop season. But, I mean, right now, uh, for today, I'm locked and loaded NBA and college hoops action for Friday night. Uh, we've got three uh, NFL winners uh, already uh, posted uh, for Sunday. And I've got my first uh, big ticket of the bowl season. Uh, locked and loaded for next Saturday's action. Well, obviously, much more uh, bowl stuff to follow. Uh, but, uh, you know, looking forward to a, a strong weekend uh, for myself and my clients. All right, Teddy. Yep, you get that Cowboys Eagles ticket, New Mexico Bowl winner up, and uh, college basketball, USC TCU on FS1. You can check that out at sportsmemo.com. Teddy, 
is 63% NFL sides year-to-date, 59% NFL year-to-date overall, and 57%, above 57% since 2015 in the NFL. The coupon code is NFL half at checkout at sportsmemo.com. Up to $200 worth of savings. That's half off the rest of his NFL season, regular season, playoffs, Super Bowl. That's the Super Bowl props package. All of it is included. No extra charges later. Got check it out at sportsmemo.com. We'll be right back with Robbie Vino to finish off the NFL Every Game on the Board podcast. F two six five eight three K. I hear my doorbell ringing. The air code worked a treat this time. I think I will start singing. Hey, 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 hey. my Christmas gifts are sorted. When shopping online, don't forget to add your air code to help a delivery service find you. To find an air code, visit the finder at aircode.ie and find life easier. 